Our commission is pleased to be here with the Calgary Police Service to share the successes and challenges in policing this past year. 2023 was another busy year where members of the service did an incredible amount despite dealing with staffing shortages. Before turning it over to Chief Mark Newfelt, I want to publicly thank all the members of CPS for that dedication to Calgarians that they carried through the past year. With that, I'll turn it over to Chief Newfelt to present. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Mr. Chair, councillors, uh, it's a pleasure to be here to provide uh, a an update on policing in Calgary and the important public safety work that was undertaken in 2023. I know our time is short, so I'll speed through some of the slides here. Uh, next slide, please. So what you have here on this slide is, uh, shows some modest increases in many of the aspects of policing that we tend to uh, put measures on throughout the year. So I know you've had a chance to uh, look at that, but it's anything from staffing numbers to calls for service to arrests and that type of thing. Type of thing. So you see the whole numbers and then the trending uh, that are there. Next slide. This goes a little bit deeper into sort of a crime and safety snapshot from the community for 2023. And this is compared to the five-year average. So we're trending positively in several of the categories as you see, uh, such as the numbers of shootings, homicides, and break and enters. Uh, but we're seeing modest increases in offense types such as assaults and robberies. It's worth noting that the shootings in particular were down by nearly 20% compared to 2022. Uh, as I said, that's the five-year average that you're seeing on the slide. And the perceived presence of a firearm was also down over 13% compared to 2022. Uh, notably in 2023, the service formed uh, or formally created a firearms investigative unit. And that's the first dedicated gun crime intelligence group for a municipal police agency in the country. Next slide. Oh, I think we need to just go back one. My apologies. Oh, you might be missing one. There is a, uh, <laughs> that's okay, I'll talk through it. Uh, there's a slide that you're not seeing with a bunch of pretty graphs on it, but basically what it talks about is uh, protests, demonstrations, and events uh, in the city. So you basically, if you could see it, it's basically, and I think it's probably in the handout materials anyway, I is that there's I been a notable- it's actually the next slide. Is it the next one? Is this the one you're referring to? Okay. Just an order issue, no big deal. Okay, perfect. That's, I just want to make sure we had the right one on that you were talking about. That's very helpful. I appreciate you digging that one up because uh, talking through it was no easy thing. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you'll see that the total number of protests, uh, events, and demonstrations were lower um, slightly in 2022. Uh, or 2023 than they were in 2022. But we did see an increasing amount of complexity and volatility with respect to the dem or the demonstrations and protests specifically. So as you know, we try to manage these uh, events with resources that are on duty uh, when we can. But in reality, uh, we'd often have to, uh, during 2023, bring in additional resources just due to the size, the length of time, and the complexity and volatility around uh, some of these events. That requires overtime, as you know, and that had a significant impact in terms of the cost to deal with uh, all of these events in 2023. Uh, more concerning is the workload stress uh, for our members, and not just in terms of the additional hours, that's, the, that's sort of the, the quantitative side, but uh, in terms of the added pressure and stress due to the volatility. And also there's oftentimes, they're subjecting them to taunting, filming, and some disrespectful sort of behavior that occurs in some of these events, um, certainly not all. But given the political or current political environment, we don't anticipate, and certainly in the first part of 2024, we've not seen uh, a trending toward a decrease in the number of protests and demonstrations in the city. Uh, as you're aware, our role there is to uh, fairly and equitably facilitate peaceful and lawful assemblies, uh, regardless of the views of those who are uh, out protesting. Um, just one notable thing, I think, in terms of um, the events themselves there was the, uh, in 2023, was the hosting of the World Petroleum Congress, which was a very, very big lift for our city generally. Um, we've seen a number of big events uh, that are uh, repeating, so Stampede and the popular Dash Mesh Parade, but uh, World Petroleum Cong Congress was w one of, not one of a kind, because we have done it before, but I think it's about 18 years or so, or 20 years since we did it the last time. So that is a big lift for the city for sure. Next slide. Okay, I have a different slide. Um, at any point, yes. this oh, slide now? Perfect, that's cool. the one. So Thank when you. we go to the next slide, we'll go two slides forward. 
<laughs> okay. I think we're going to get you up here right away. Uh, working with partners, we've made great strides on our commitment to ensuring the right resources are provided to vulnerable Calgarians through the crisis response and call diversion efforts. So two mental health clinicians have been assigned uh, to our arrest processing unit as part of the what we call the SMART initiative. Four have gone to District 1, and each district has been assigned with a designated mental health clinician to support individuals in crisis. Last year, over 7,000 calls were diverted uh, from Calgary 911 to 211, and those were calls that were received initially by people who were in crises, um, where the initial assessment was such that those situations could be dealt with either over the phone or through services dispatched that were not the police. So that's a, that's a pretty impressive number. And through those uh, discussions there, more than 11,000 different resources, including referrals, were provided to uh, individuals through this initiative. Next slide. There we go. So we continue to undertake a significant amount of work in response to feedback that we're receiving from Calgarians. We launched the Safe Public Spaces Action Plan in partnership with the City of Calgary, and that was to ensure parks, pathways, and transit networks uh, were established as safe spaces um, for the public. We know that there was a period of time where folks were definitely not feeling safe in those spaces. Um, also, just as we look into 2024, we're in the midst right now of operationalizing the 50 officers that were promised by the, by the province as part of the election in 2023. We allocate additional resources to the missing persons team, including dedicated resource for Indigenous missing persons and to reduce the call volume on frontline patrol. And we established a racial equity office and strengthened our work with our internal and external anti-racism committees, as well as our diversity advisory boards, and all of that to better understand community's perspective on improving police service to Indigenous, Black and racialized communities. Next slide. So in, in terms of improving accountability, notable gains have been made in process efficiencies and frankly the use of technology, most notably body-worn camera uh, technology and objective footage. This has benefited citizens and CPS officers through the more timely uh, complaint resolution. And a, a really uh, recent example of that was the ACERT investigation that we saw close just in the last number of days. That's one where there was an officer involved shooting in Temple. Uh, and that investigation, which sometimes we've seen those go on for years, uh, was closed in 17 days. Uh, so that's a record, uh, and that's important because that is very important for public trust and confidence, for folks to be able to know what's happened there. And it's also important for the wellness of officers who otherwise would be under the stress of an ongoing investigation for literally years. So very important uh, there as well. As of the start of 2022, there were nearly 400 open complaints with the professional standards section. And I go back to when I started in 2019, that number was 500 complaints backed up in professional standards. By the end of 2023, the team had, team had achieved a 70% reduction in open complaints. They've been as low as 126 open files in there. Uh, and a new average file time closure of six months. Very, very impressive. Professional Standards also introduced a new online public portal to create efficiencies and to keep complainants informed on the progress of their complaint while it's open. A focus on de-escalation, communication skills, equipment and policy compliance continued to be emphasized with the goal of de-escalating uh, for the purposes of the public and officer safety. And so in 2023, we saw use of force numbers increase slightly by 18 in terms of a whole number compared to 2022, but that still represents a tiny fraction of, call of calls. In fact, less than one-tenth of 1% or just over one-tenth of 1% of calls uh, for service resulting in any use of force of any kind. Next slide. So for the fourth year in a row, the service was acknowledged as one of the top employers in Alberta. We're pleased with that, but we know there's much more work to be done moving forward. We continue to listen to our members who've provided more than 500 pieces of feedback and ideas through different engagements over the past few years. More than 400 of those have been actioned as part of our Pathways to Engagement initiative. We also introduced a new civilian level deputy chief, chief people officer, to lead the Bureau of People and Organizational Development and have created a new bureau uh, focused on optimizing our organizational performance. Of note, uh, for the first time in several years, employee engagement scores also improved in 2023, so we're pleased with that. And not reflected in this slide, but I think helpful, in 2023 we carried out a workforce culture or a census, uh, uh, yeah, workforce census, which indicated that 37% of our workforce is comprised of females, 57% of our uh, workforce is male, and 5% identified as gender diverse. Next slide. So just looking into 2024, we were already three months into the year. Our work has already begun with the commission to ensure that Calgary remains one of the safest major cities in the country. This year, we've identified four high-level focus areas to direct our priorities. Those focus areas are our people, our diversity, our community, and our performance. And with and through those uh, pillars, then we aim to fulfill the nine outcomes, which you see on the left-hand side of your screen. Next slide. 
And so finally, there was a lot of work, as the chair mentioned, to do in 2023, and a lot was accomplished by CPS. Above all else, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the CPS members, as well as our public safety partners uh, in the city and outside of it, who continue to give their best day in and day out to keep our city safe and to keep our citizens engaged. I'm honored to serve our city with them and extend my personal gratitude to Council, to Commission and Calgarians for their continued support and confidence.